I don't know if I should be making this video. I don't know if it's the right thing to do by making this video where I teach you guys how as a freelancer or agency, how you can make tons of money uh, using this unethical or maybe borderline illegal way. Well, it's not illegal. It could be in some places, but today I'm gonna show you guys this unethical hack. Well, it could be turned into an ethical hack as well. I'm gonna show you this unethical hack that agencies and freelancers are using in order to make tons and tons of money. So let's start. Now, before that, here's a disclaimer. Now, I'm teaching you all this information for entertainment purpose only. Wink, use it however you feel is the best way to use it. But if, there, if something does happen, I'm not liable. Now, let's start. This is gonna work out super, super good if you're a brand new freelancer or agency and if you're looking to make tons of money on sites like Fiverr and Upwork or freelancer.com or any of these sites. Now, step number one, step number one is you need to create an employer account on one of these sites, for example, upwork.com. So, and you might be thinking, why would you create an employer account as a freelancer, right? Now, here is the thing. So, you'll create an employer account, which pretty much means that you'll be posting uh, a job requirement on upwork.com or freelancer.com, and then you'll be getting applications, which, you know, is kind of unethical because you're not trying to hire someone, you're trying to get something out of these people. So step number one is to create an employer account, okay? Step number two is to post a job on freelancer.com or upwork.com. Now, what kind of job listing will you post? So you'll post a job listing based on what you do. For example, if you are a video editor, you'll post a job saying, hey, I'm looking to hire a video editor, okay? So if you are a full stack programmer, you might uh, you know, post a job saying, hey, we're looking for a full stack programmer, blah, 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 okay? So essentially at this point, right, even at till this point, it's not unethical to post a job. Now, here's where it gets kind of messy. Now, on this job post, you will say, hey, can you please share your samples or portfolio? Okay, now, so everybody knows the fact that, you know, having a good portfolio is probably the number one best reason, best way to get new clients on Upwork, Fiverr, or freelancer.com. You knew it. Now, especially if you're brand new, you know, since you don't have that reputation, your portfolio is what actually matters. This is what people are looking, uh, you know, to before judging you, before hiring you. So, so on your, you know, job post, you will say, "Hey, we're looking for blah 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 freelancer who can help us with video editing. Whatever you do, whatever you sell, that's the job posting for." And you will say, "Please provide your, you know, portfolio or you know, sample or examples of your work." That's the. This is the trick. Now, like I said. Till, the, till now, everything is fine, okay? Now, this is where you have a choice of, you know, making this entire technique ethical and unethical. Let's talk about unethical first. So, a lot of agencies, what they are doing is they get these, you know, work samples from various, you know, freelancers, okay? they download it and they put it on you know, Google Drive or they put it on, let's say, YouTube, right? And then uh, they will just mark it private, okay? Now, they do that and they use other people's you know, uh, portfolio to get clients. They will log back in as a freelancer on Upwork.com or freelancer.com and then they will start applying for jobs and providing the best of the best you know, a portfolio and samples because they got it from that job post. Now, whenever you do make that job post, make sure, you know, it's targeted towards people in the US and, you know, make sure to you know, ask for an expert because the portfolios that you get, it's gonna be the best of the best, right? And then uh, the unethical way to do it is download all that information, put it on your Google Drive or your YouTube and then, use it as your portfolio and get clients. Now, a lot of people are doing this. Now, is it unethical? I don't know, it's up to you to decide, okay? I cannot decide for you, but people are doing it. Now, I'm calling it unethical because, you know, that's not just that's not the vibe I wanna work with because that's just not my style, but uh, people are doing it. I know plenty of agencies, even if they are like top agencies, they're doing it. They're doing it and they're killing it. Now, now this has two sides, right? Now, um, 
one side is that, you know, I'm thinking about it, right? So when you, if you were working for somebody, you would create your resume, right? Or if you're applying for college, you'd you know, create your, you know, CV or your resume, right? On that resume, most people, even counselors at high school or college will encourage people to exaggerate, meaning add more stuff, add more stuff than you actually did. Now, they tell you to do this because they know for a fact that somebody else is already doing it. Now, if you don't do it, you can't even compete. Um, do we take it like that? Because I mean, that it's, it's in some ways, it's kind of the same thing. Now, I'm not saying one is right or the other is wrong. That's for you to decide, but you can do that and get a lot of clients, but you'd be borderline unethical because you're using someone else's portfolio. Now, so how do you turn this into an ethical method? Now, here's what you can do. So, so at this point, so once you start getting these applications, what you can do is you can tell that freelancer that, hey, listen, get the permission. So you say, can I use your portfolio to get some, you know, projects? And then I will pay you, you know, X, Y, Z amount. So, you know, if I get a project for like, you know, that you charge like 50 bucks, I will mark it up to hundred dollars, right? And then you get to keep what you ask for. And I get to also keep a margin. Can I use your portfolio to do that? Okay. Now this is a good question. Okay. Why would a freelancer allow it? Now, if they're smart, they will say yes. Now, why would they say yes? Now, if they are not thinking right, they will say, don't use it. You can't use it. Now, that's okay, but a smart freelancer will say yes because just talking numbers, it makes more sense. Freelancers would be, would be making more money, right? So, so a lot of people don't think it logically when it comes to economics, right? So they, they make decisions based on emotions, right? If you're making decisions on emotions, you know, it's fine when it comes to like family, friends, but when it comes to making money, if you're making decisions based on emotions, that's not right. So if you're a freelancer and you're watching this video and someone says, ask you that question, you should say yes. You should maybe raise your price and say, okay, I will do it. But as long as, you know, I get paid this much per this much work, right? So, so in this situation, like I said, you have a choice of take, making it unethical by using someone else's portfolio, or you can make it ethical and legal by using their portfolio. You get to tell them, hey, can I use it? Now, if they give you permission, there's nothing you know unethical about it. In business, if it's a win-win situation for both parties, it's a good deal. It's a good deal now, but if you are an employer, how do you get around this? Because it's happening whether you know it or not. Okay. And you, you'll realize it's happening because let's say you hire someone based on their portfolio, right? And just to realize that, Hey, their actual work is not as good as you thought it was. Does that make sense? I think it's happened to a lot of people. So how do you figure this out? So here's a couple of options. So if let's say you're hiring a video editor, ask to see if you can see their keyframes on their video, that the sample that you, let's say you like a sample, right? Ask them, hey, can I see the keyframes? Okay, you don't have to, they don't have to send you a file. They can just record a Loom video and then send you in the keyframes, right? If they are a program and say, hey, can I see uh, the source code of this? You don't, you don't, they don't need to show you the entire file. Just make them make a Loom video and then make it maybe show some, you know, proof that, hey, this is their work. Now, this is, there's nothing wrong with that because as an employer, as a person, you're, you're giving employment to these people, right? You have full right to ask for this information. Does that make sense? So you can do these things to make sure that, you know, they're not scamming you or they're not duping you. Does that make sense? That's it.